Patrick. Guys, we are live and we are hanging out with our awesome subscriber constituents again. We are taking their questions. Everybody, let's wave bye bye to the 60% of people who are going to bounce when they see this is an hour and a half long live stream. Check out our channel. You'll enjoy, I promise. So let's start out with this first question from one of our subs. If not rebuilding, do you take the premier guy with a top three pick or trade back to gather more assets? So let's say you earn that 103. Go ahead, Scott. Well, I said he's not rebuilding, though. I'm confused. He earned the 103, but not oh, rebuilding. Oh, I'm sorry. If not rebuilding, okay. So should he take a premier guy with the top three pick? Let's assume that he is rebuilding. What is the format, Clay? Let's say it's a 12-team super flex start 10. It's always a math equation with me. So if it's one of those where 12 starters, maybe even 11 starters, I'm fine trading back just for more assets, especially if there's more assets that I can use to do what I've been talking about on trades in five or on uh, destination dynasty recently. Can I swindle someone into giving me what is going to be a high pick next year for a mid to late pick plus something this year, which would be perfect to do if you could move back for maybe two mid to late first here, right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. 12 teams start 10 though, especially if my quarterbacks are locked down. The only time I'm trading back is can I trade back to the 105 and take Gibbs potentially? I know this is a general question and not a 2023 class question specifically, uh, but barring that it's not a position where I'm like, okay, I, I have three top 12 quarterbacks. Do I really need to draft Bryce Young or CJ Stroud just because it's the best value? Or is that one where I can move back two spots with a, to get a second and still take the running back, quote-unquote, hammer that I would take anyway? So I think in this case, not rebuilding. I have a top three pick. It's just a luxury. You can, you can go any which way. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but it's leveraged the hell out of it because there's probably a couple desperate teams that are rebuilding that are going, I need a quarterback or I need to move up to try to get the player that I want. So just leverage it. That's all I would say. That's what I'm saying, man. Like I, I first, I'm not even thinking about trading back first. First, I'm going to every team in that league that that's a trash can, and trying to take their best player for it. And if I have to add to it, fine. But yeah, I'm searching out the trash cans, um, and I'm going to take their players because they need that one or three more than me. I'm guessing if they're a trash can, there's a good chance they need a quarterback. And look, I understand. I'm a trash can in some leagues. I am the trash can, you know. And and I got to make that move. And if someone comes to me and they're like, "Hey, I'll give you the one or three for your." Uh, I, I don't know. Let's just say Jalen Waddle. All right. I got to do it. I got to do it. Even <laughs> if it's a start nine, you know, my quarterbacks are Mac Jones and Kirk Cousins. It's not looking good. I got to do something. So let's go. Let's go to this inbox offer that we had in the hopper too. So this is a 12 team start 11 super flex. Give Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley get Watson and Diggs. So it's giving a stack, but he's creating a stack by getting Watson and Diggs side because his QB one is Josh Allen. What do you think on this one? You're Wait, getting the better receiver and you're getting probably the better quarterback. So I think this is an easy, easy accept trade. I don't know why someone would give up Watson and Diggs for another QB and a lesser wide receiver. It feels like the and you're stacking up the Diggs Allen side with a team that probably wouldn't pay for that stack. Otherwise, you're essentially handing them that extra value. Brings up a topic I want to talk about a little bit later in the show. But yeah, I'm taking the Watson Diggs side easy. Yeah, this this isn't even hard, bro. What, what are you doing? Just stop it. Stop it. Uh, hopefully, it's, hopefully, accept was hit and it's yeah. no longer an inbox offer. We, it's a completed trade. There's no reason for a thesis on this. Take the better goddamn side, which is Watson and Diggs. And we got a comment. I, I'm not going to put it up here, but yeah, this is a very pro Deshaun Watson podcast. Yes, uh, it has is. No, nothing to do with or show, not a podcast. Listen, Deshaun Watson before the you know what happened was the second best QB in the league. So yeah, I like Trevor Lawrence. He's five years younger, four years younger than Watson. But to sit here and tell me he has a higher ceiling, the only thing he has is what? perception of more job security yeah he's and got less, less probably less chance of being arrested 
but yeah, well, and, and, it, and it's funny probably. how Watson just gets completely barbecued for his bad six game stretch last year, but we ignored like the first 20 games of Trevor Lawrence's career where he was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not hating on Trevor Lawrence, but to sit here and say there right. is a tear break between those two, it's definitely not more than the Diggs versus Calvin Ridley tear break. So even if you like Lawrence more, I'd still take the trade because it's a, it's a clean two for two. Love it. So here's one, uh, one of our subscriber questions. And he said to assume it's, it's not a very active league, especially right now, but generally it's in an inactive league. So what do you do when your roster construction is off? For example, having four tight ends, a non-premium or running backs in a full PPR, no running backs in a half PPR. So what do you do when your construction's off? And it's kind of a, uh, kind of a dead league without much trading activity. Shane. Uh, I mean, well, first of all, you've got four tight ends and a non-premium. You probably can just cut at least two of those. I guarantee you that two of those aren't even worth rostering. So I'd probably just cut two of them and just go pick up running backs. Um, and again, and it's not active. I hear this all the time. Like, oh, my league's not active. I'm in a league that's not active. I've only legitimately ever been in one league that's not active. And you know why that is? Because I'm fucking active. Like, <laughs> I am going out there, you know? It's like a dating app. Like, they're, they're not just going to swipe right on you. You got to swipe right on them. You got to attack. You got to be in attack mode. Well, not on the date because that'll get you locked up. But what you should be doing is you should be going out and sending out offers to everyone, literally everyone in your league, and target the people that have those quarterbacks that go to that tight end. Now, are they going to want your tight ends? Because they're probably trash is what I'm thinking. Um, no, but you got to at least make the effort. You got to be the aggressive. Yeah, Shane nailed it. You you say it's inactive. Have you sent 50 trades to all the other teams? And if they all decline or just 45 of them expire and it's crickets, then you can declare your league inactive. But I feel like a lot of te- leagues are declared inactive, yet it's just because you're not getting a bunch of good trades in your inbox. And I think all three of us would attest to, right. at least Shane and I, we send out five to ten times more trades than we receive. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that's the activity. I mean, how many of our leagues are we driving yeah. the activity? It's not the other. There's six other people that are waiting for us to send offers. And that's part of being in leagues with us. So this was a missed super chat. And, and Alex threw it in the uh, threw it in the com- community post as well. But how do you guys change your startup draft strategy in a 12 team super flex start nine half point per first down league? So let's assume it's a, a full PPR, but then there's that little 0. 0.5 for, for a first down. Scott? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking up. When I saw this question, I quickly pulled up first downs by team last year. And so if you're looking at half point per first down, to- team totals anywhere between like 250 to 400 team first downs for the season. So if you spread those out, looking at like the leaders, you're probably somewhere around 50 to 100 for like the core dynasty players that you care about, running backs that are getting a lot of carries. So let's just give a player 75 first downs, right? Let's give a running back 75 first downs on the year. Be pretty good. What is that? An extra 37 and a half points? Yes. Divide that by 17 games played. Let's give them 15 games. I mean, you're talking two points per game difference for running backs. And for receivers, if it's half PPR, then, you know, receivers are already devalued a little bit. And I'd prefer running backs because it's easier for a running back to get a first down than a receiver for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I think it just basically changes your roster construction slightly to lean more heavy towards running backs, which you probably already are in a start nine. The flex rate, I mean, the PPR versus half PPR versus whatever the tight end premium is matters. I think it just changes your flex roster construction a little bit more towards running backs, but not a ton. Shane, any thoughts on that? Or did Scott just crush it completely? No, I mean, he crushed it completely. I probably look, I here's a dirty little secret about me. I don't know if anyone knows this. I actually like running backs. So if you give me an excuse to lean running back, I'm going to do it. Um, so I'll probably go a little bit more running back heavy than I, I, I normally would. I might draft a running back in the first four rounds. It might happen. Um, it won't feel natural, but I, it might happen. 
So here's another one, and then we'll hit some uh, hit some supers and, and questions from the from those live. When it comes to mid level QBs and superflex, how much are you willing to pay for a QB three? Assuming you already have two of the top twelve guys, should you pay a premium to have a third QB? So let me let me ask you this way. So Scott, let's say your quarterbacks are Deshaun Watson and Justin Herbert. Are you okay with your third quarterback being Jimmy Garoppolo? And you look at your if you look at your QBs and you're like, I'm I'm pretty good there. You're focusing on other needs. Yeah, if you have a really, really efficient business that's running as smooth as it can be, super efficient with your payroll, everything's operating like right on the margins. What do you usually do for the insurance, right? You want the cheapest, most effective insurance you can get. And you just pray to God that you never have to use it. But if you do, it's probably going to cost you X amount of dollars. That's exactly how I view this situation. If I have those two QBs, I want to try to extract as much value out of my third QB. So if you just happen to have a top four pick, but you have that QB room, you can draft Bryce Young. You can draft CJ Stroud. But the move is to then pivot off of them. Can you move Bryce Young for Jimmy Garoppolo in a first? Something like that, or some iteration of that type of trade. I still want to have my QB3, and I'll let Shane answer, because I think he's a little more risky than me. He'll go, I don't need a QB3 until I need a QB3. I just want the lowest common denominator. So I will pivot down from a Russell Wilson or Kirk Cousins downward, and I don't care if I'm having a long-term starter as my QB3. It can be a one-year guy if he expires, Big deal. I have two studs. I can just replace the QB3 next year. But I don't want to hold too much value on my team unless it's a third hammer QB. That's where Shane and I totally differ. My third QB is Justin Fields. Okay, he's going to cost you a freight to get him. It's not going to be, oh, man, I can't use him, so I'm going to trade him away. Let me, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let me ask you this too. So I'm in a league where it's four point per passing touchdown, and I've got Fields, Lamar, and Dak. So naturally I'm trying to sell Dak because it's the, I mean, he, he gives, he gives you a couple yards on the ground, but he doesn't have that floor. How much should I value a Justin Fields and a four point per passing touchdown versus a six point? How big is of a difference is that those two points per passing touchdown? There's a lot, not a good enough answer. A little bit more would, would be good. A little bit more color behind that. I mean, a lot. Um, I, running quarterbacks mean less to me. Um, quarterbacks that throw for less, t- fewer touchdowns when they only when it's four point scoring. I, sorry, where am I at? I'm looking for the screen. What was it? Four point per touchdown. Four point per pass touchdown versus six. How big of a difference is it? Oh wait, I like Justin Fields. Um, I'm confused, Scott. You in? Okay, Scott, go ahead. <laughs> I think what Shane was trying to say is he prefers the rushing quarterback a little bit more in the four point passing touchdown. Thank you. I think we overcorrect it though, because we only immediately go and look at the scoring and we say, Oh man, Jalen hurts outscored Joe Burrow by seven points a game or six points a game in that format, which is true. But I think we do kind of still have to respect the pocket passing tier because they're still throwing a lot of volume. They're throwing for a lot of yards the pocket passers that throw more attempts and more yards are going to get more touchdowns. So I think it's more of it just pushes like Fields and Lamar closer to that mid tier to where like in a startup, you could tell me I can take Fields or Lamar over Herbert or Lawrence or Burrow. And it wouldn't be like outlandish, right? They're just closer together. So it doesn't really change where the, the big tier of like nine or 10 but it definitely like in a, in a situation where you have Dak Prescott, Shane's always been like, Hey, Dak Prescott is just a fancy Dallas Cowboy version of Kirk Cousins. That's the kind of player you tear down off of. A guy I'd like, like to tear down or, to Daniel Jones from, from Dak. Yeah, I'd, you know? I'd, I'd take Daniel Jones over Dak Straight in up. that format. It's very, <laughs> I mean, maybe not over, but it's very, they're basically the same thing. Right. So can, can you do that? Yeah. If you can do that, can you tear from, you know, put it this way, Dak to Kyler Murray in that. Give me Kyler Murray all day and someone needs an active starter, fine. But as soon as Kyler comes back, I'd much prefer him in a four-point passing touchdown than Dak. So I think it's just trying to find the best value and just shifting the value of some of the lower-end QBs. It, it's funny, too, because, like, here would be my question for you and 
and for Clay, honestly, would you bump up the value of a guy like Desmond Ritter or Sam Howell in that format because they run, or are you still like, yeah, they're well, one-year see, bets, just like half the QB landscape? See, and that's why you were talking this through. That that's what came to my head, mind, right? There's like we're just like, oh, well, the running back quarterback's worth more. Well, not if he's bad. Like, you know what I mean? That doesn't make a bad quarterback a good play. Like, no, Desmond Ritter's still Desmond Ritter. He's not a guy that I believe is going to be any good, even if, you know, this format might favor him more. So he's someone that I think could be QB 16 instead of QB 20. Mm -hmm. uh, eh, you know, as my QB three or four, sure, but I'm not going to go out of my way to, to acquire him. Chub Knuckles, thank you very much for the for the super chat. And this is uh, Kezia. Did, did you Kesha. say... Kesha. Yeah. You Kesha. Just, just did a roster review for, for Kesha. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you very much for the super chat. Kesha shared a hard ass, uh, metal song for me to check out too. Oh, nice. Thank you. So Chubb Knuckles is doing his first, his or her Kezia. Anyway, <laughs> Chubb Knuckles is doing his or her first dynasty best ball startup. 12 team PPR super flex 1.5 tight end premium start two tight ends start 11 total 0.2 points per rushing yard. I pick 11th any strategy and tips. Thanks jets. Well, normally I'd say 11th is a terrible spot to be, but hopefully there's third round reversal. If so, that makes this even better. I, I think the only change in best ball is by the warp tool. Look at it because for best ball, the warp tool works awesome because it so literally where gives do they you... buy the, where do they buy the warp tool? Yeah, we'll put it in the chat, but it's South Harmon FF.com and it's, you can try it for seven bucks a month. So you literally just plug in your league, but it's great for best ball because it's giving you basically the true warp based on a best ball format, which you don't have to worry about setting a lineup. That's the one of the downsides of the way it's calculated on a lot of sites is when you're setting a lineup, there's obviously you have to have them in your lineup to capture it. So I think that's right. one of the things you have to kind of decipher with roster construction. But I would just say here, like you don't want to flex tight ends, uh, but it is best ball. So you want to really hone in on your roster construction and say, okay, I need to have enough tight ends to get by, which is probably going to be, how many would you keep on a team like this, Shane? Best ball start to 1.5. Like you don't want to flex them, but you probably need what? Like four pretty good I'd, ones. I'd take five. I'd want at least cool. five tight ends. I, I'd be happy with four. But I will say this. So where I would usually dread or where I would usually add like the running back 14 on a team, I might, I might lean towards a tight end two on a team here um, for the roster. So would you 11th? Sorry, go ahead, Scott. No, I was going to ask, I was going to ask you, Clay, would you take Kyle Pitts over a top nine quarterback here? Uh, I would take Kyle Pitts over. Yeah, I mean, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews. Would you take those guys over a top in, nine quarterback, given they're a positional advantage, and you have to start two? If if I'm in the the eleventh slot and Kyle Pitts is still there, when it gets to me, I'm taking Kyle Pitts. It's I mean, one of those two will be there based on the numbers. Yeah. It'll be to be a top nine quarterback or Pitts or Andrews. I think those would be my. Those are probably be my top. 11, maybe you throw Richardson in there, but I think you could even argue Pitts or Andrews over Richardson here. So then how do you follow it up on the uh, on the turn? Pick 11, so what are you doing? What are you doing with that second pick? Praying that there's a decent quarterback to draft and then go from well, there? So here's the thing about best ball. I'm not as obsessed with the two elite quarterbacks in best ball because it's not as big of an advantage, especially if your quarterback performs like... Justin Herbert last year, right? He's valued as a top six quarterback, but he was QB 13 or whatever he ended up being in there, man. If you hit on the right combination of Jared Goff, Geno Smith, Derek Carr, Kurt cousins, he, best ball, you don't have to worry about it. You probably have to have three of them. If you build a Jared Goff, Jordan love Derek Carr QB room, you're going to be squeamish when you get to the off season and you're going to go, man, I hope these three survive for more than one year. But in best ball, it can get by. It can beat the team that has two elite quarterbacks and no third, especially mm -hmm. if those guys don't perform at the top level. So I'm not as obsessed with getting – I'd like to get the elite quarterback. Man, could I start Deshaun Watson, Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews? Like, does one of those QBs fall to the 11th spot because somebody takes Pitts or somebody takes Kelsey or somebody takes Chase or Jefferson? That'd be the dream start, like elite yeah. QB and then Mark Andrews. Mm -hmm. That'd be gold. 
Okay, let's switch to uh, to Patrick. Thank you for the super chat, man. Uh, it's a super flex 12 team. He's got Fields, Tua, Tannehill, Aaron Rodgers. She trade Tua for a 24 first. And then this is, sorry, I forgot my message on the other super chat. Thoughts on Superflex 12 team not rostering any starting QBs, then not trying to get one in 23 draft to rank for 24. We'll essentially put backups in. Okay, so first let's answer this. Trade Tua for a 24 first if that's your QB room. You've got Fields, Tua, Tannehill, and Rodgers. Sure. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone for me. I'm I'm just like to uh I'm just not touching him. And Scott actually texted a, a funny picture earlier. It's probably been making its way around Twitter and stuff, but how two is now a fullback. He was looking big in that picture. He looked like he put on some some LBs. Um, hey, maybe, hey, it he needs other he's he needs head cushion. More mass to fall on so that it's not his head. That's the only thing I can think of. Yep. Okay, so we uh, we would trade to a for 24 first. That's us. And then um, this, not rostering any starting QBs. Not trying to get one in 23 draft to rank for 24. We'll essentially put backups in. What do you think about this? Thoughts and thoughts are not rostering any starting QBs and then trying to get one in 23 to, to rank for 24. Probably means tank. To, to tank. tank. Oh, yeah, so, no. Look, I'm I'm all about if you're gonna do something, you fucking go full force and do it. Like don't don't do a half ass tank. Like fucking tank. Like you should be trading for Kyler, um, starting him for eight games this year, and then your other quarterback could be back up, and then you go draft Caleb Williams, and then next year when Caleb Williams replaces Kyler in Arizona, it'll be funny when you got both of them now, and Kyler's in um Los Angeles. Yeah, you send him to Los Angeles. The only thing I would say is if you're going to do this, like hopefully you also don't have like Cooper cup on your team or any running back. You could trade for anything. Like I'm, I'm okay. If you do it, like Shane said, like go all in, but I got your roster. Then you shouldn't have probably 90% of the players that you have. There's probably only like yeah. 20 players I would want to build around. If you're literally going to not have any QBs. So Panye best. That's a good, that's a good one. This was a uh, 11 50 AM. So I had just set up the stream and Panye best got in here with a, uh, with a question. How do you punt slash tank without ruining the future of your team? We always talk about how to contend and win, but sometimes you need to just have a down year so you can rebuild. Well, one way to do that is, uh, not having quarterbacks like our, our previous folk, uh, gentlemen, ma'am, sir, person, just noted. it. Um, that's one way to just almost guarantee it. Um, all rookie wide receivers, but then you take the risk that some of them won't hit. Um, I mean, really the way of doing it without ruining your future is that making sure you have draft capital. Like you can't be betting on players like, all right, well, I think, Traylon Burks is going to bounce back in year three, even though next year's year two, um, stuff like that. That's where you're going to end up having just a wasteland and no assets. Like you've just got to gut it and get multiple picks back um, so that you can make lots and lots of trades. Yeah. Shane hit on a couple of the good points. I, I think you have to really be savvy and do as much you can creatively to get to the bottom without just like completely destroying your construction. Nothing's better than those teams. You go, yep, we just did a roster review where it was, yep, my team stinks, or at least it finished last, last year. But then you look at the team and you go, hmm, Jonathan Taylor, Deshaun Watson, like all these guys that didn't help you last year magically are on your team this year. Right. And you go from, I finished last, I have the 101, 102. Now I'm the favorite in the league. Like that's the, the best way to tank where it just flips on a switch when you get to the next season. Yep. I just saw this one start here. Hey guys, one of the listener league invites going out for those who want a spot. I want to be on the lookout for it. So I actually have a spreadsheet up here where I've got listener league winners uh, listed out, filled the third league. And I'm going to be asking for your, uh, for your sleeper usernames uh, shortly. So be on the lookout email from me. We'll get those things going within the next couple of weeks here. Okay. So 
Let's um let's address the crowd, man. 24 minutes in. We have 331 eyeballs in here. Thank you so much for joining Tuesday crew. We love you. Best night of the week for us. Um, look down, hit that little thumbs up, give us a like if you wouldn't mind. Easiest way to help out the channel, but only if you're enjoying the content. Uh, if you're watching on replay, consider joining this community. We got an awesome group of, of subscribers here. Everybody helps each other out. We're in the trenches with you. Total awesome community here. Very proud of it. So join, join if you're interested. So let's go to Ty. He's going to give us a, use me as a take a breath, drink water moment. Thank you for the super chat, Ty. That's good. I will. I don't have any. Shout out to Ty. What's going on, Ty? Shout out to Ty. Thank you, Ty. It was a delicious sip of whatever I just took a drink of. I had a bunch of floater seltzer water, so I just put them all into into a cup of glass. What a savage. YouTube user. Great avatar, great name here. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. One of two, usually catch the replay, love the content. How much would you guys hate this league format? 14 team, one QB, start six. It's QB, two running backs, two wide receivers, tight end. TD only scoring, very shallow benches. Full roster is two QBs, four running backs, five, five wide receivers, two tight ends. Okay, and then his roster, and again, this is a, God, it's crazy, 14-team, 1QB, start six. His roster is Hertz, T-Law, Bijan, Brees, JT, Swift, JJ, AJ Brown, Alave, London, Nico, Pitts, Goddard, Hammers, hashtag Hammers, hashtag pay to brag. I mean, th- that's what you have to have, right? Yeah. So I will say this. I hate the format. Um, it's only 84 starters throughout the league. I did math um, and I double checked it um, when no one was watching. Um, so I absolutely hate the format, but go back to the first part for me. Mm-hmm. I do love that they force you. They're like, you need, you have to start four running backs. Like, I love that. Like if you're going to do a, a league like this, you have to start two. Sorry, sorry, Shane. You have to start two of the six and then the roster you have four running backs. Yeah, I think you probably have to roster that construction. Well, but I don't like it as much. Now, I liked it better when you had to start four running backs. Okay, so that's why my <laughs> math was off there. I would like this better if they forced you to start four running backs because then it'd be like an absolute just nightmare of a challenge, and that would be fun. But look, whatever. You play what you enjoy. That's all that matters, really. And you know what? He just had to talk about that he had Nico Collins. Oh, I know. Nico, Nico made the Dude, list. Bring it up, Nico. <laughs> yeah. One of these players does not fit. Which one is it, Shane? Yeah. Nico. Nico does not fit there. The roster that fifth receiver. So you know what? I had to have a placeholder in there. That Nico Collins. Right, right. No, thank you for that super chat. Much appreciated. Yeah, whack uh whack format there. That's for sure. Okay, let's go to uh let's go to another one here. Um, let's go to Charlie, Professor Charlie. Thank you very much, as always, sir. Uh, It's an inbox trade. There's no hashtag for this super chat from Charlie tonight. Inbox trade. Get Alave and Najee. Give Bryce and Terry McLaurin. It is a 10-team super flex start nine. Okay, so without looking at that that bottom part, what do you think about that in a vacuum? You're giving up Bryce. Bryce Young and Terry McLaurin, and you're getting Alave and Najee. I'm just going to agree. In a vacuum, I'm just no, gonna say, right? Well, I'm just going to say yes, because I want Professor Charlie just to make this deal and be done with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're like to make 37 deal. DMs deep on this like one. He, he, he wants to make this deal. He wants to make this deal. And I can't always say you should make this deal, deals like this. But I mean, his roster, he can afford it. He can yeah, afford so- it. So I will read off the roster now. It's Josh Allen, Deshaun Watson, Anthony Richardson, uh, Bryce Young. It's got Garrett Wilson, Devontae Smith, DK, Terry McLaurin, Derek Henry, Miles Sanders. Um, so that's the trade. He said he asked for CD. He has Dak and said no. Do I even need the trade? Depth for win now versus future upside. Help me process. Scott, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I got to give Charlie props. He actually submitted a super chat that I was able to follow along. Like I had to like do a refresh of my eyes. And uh, he still listed the start nine before the 10 team, which was weird. I've never seen that before. 
makes my brain kind of go backwards when you start the the starters before the format. <laughs> this is one of the few because we get a lot of messages from Charlie. Sometimes I literally have to like sit down and focus to read what he's saying. <laughs> Uh, but this is one of the first ones he sent where it's like, okay, it finally makes sense to trade Bryce Young on this roster where he literally has three of the top 10 quarterbacks ahead of Bryce Young for top 12 receiver in Alave. And in the format, I'd prefer Najee Harris to Terry McLaurin. So he's getting very close to, like, this is one of those where you say, okay, are you getting a better offer for Bryce mm-hmm. Young that fits what you want? And the answer is, Maybe, but I probably have to send them all out and sit on them for mm-hmm. weeks and weeks and weeks and talk to other people in DMs. Accept it. Accept it and move on from this league, Charlie. If, if this team doesn't win the title, you're part of that 64% variance that things just didn't go your way because you've literally like maxed it. It's it's reached capacity. It's yeah. either going to explode or it isn't. And shout out to Charlie. He sent a nice video earlier this week uh, to me in my DMs saying nice things. It made me happy. I like when people are nice to me. Stop being mean to me, all you people. Uh, And Charlie's definitely in our league because Charlie's not in enough leagues. He's in the listener league because the dude wants to do nothing but trade. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. He's got a spot. Yeah, yeah. He'll he'll be uh, be in the listener league. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to what the hell was I looking at? Let's go to another one. We got an inbox trade here from Cameron. 12 team, one QB, PPR, no tight end premium, start eight. Give AJ Dillon the 108, receive Mark Andrews and a 24 third. His only tight end is Juwan Johnson. He's got the 102. Yeah, that's that's done. We'll go ahead and read this out. Has a 102, 103, 110, two seconds on top of the 108. That's an easy accept, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Especially when he has the, the 102 one and the 103. Like yeah. he has those already. It's not like he's missing out on potential players. Like he can't trade up because he literally already has, you know, Gibbs, JSN, whoever he wants locked up. So it's like, yeah, you're adding a hammer tight end to a team that only has Jawan Johnson at. It's not a trade I would even make in this format with the team that he has. It's like handing him positional advantage in a start eight. Yeah, take this all day. Good deal. Yeah, 108 and a 1QB. We we went through that exercise. That is, that's gross when he gets a 108 and a 1QB. It's just shot in the dark there. Okay, yeah. Be the uh, Hopefully, Cameron, you are the proud owner of, uh, of Mark Andrews for a very cheap price. Good luck in the rookie draft. Okay, let's go back to the starred ones here. Let's go to Duck Bell. Thanks for the super chat, Duck Bell. This is, we have we haven't answered one from Duck Bell yet. Look, look no, at that. Uh, look at the that avatar and stuff too. Duck Bell. Okay, probably has a YouTube channel of sorts. Two QB league has the one hundred and one. I went out and got the one hundred and two. Gave up Najee Love and the twenty four first. Have Herbert at QB, Bryce ETN, JK Dobbins, Garrett Wilson, AJ, I'm guessing AJ Brown, Ridley, McLaurin, and Andrews getting Bijan and Anthony Richardson. Thoughts? We don't know the number of starters. The shallower it is, I'd be okay with the trade he made. Two QB league, he did give up quite a bit. If this was like, let's just say 12 teams start 11, I wouldn't have probably given that up. In a let's, let's say league. it's a let's say it's a start nine. I mean, start nine. He's already got geez Herbert, Brees, Garrett Wilson, AJ Brown, Mark Andrews. You're adding Bijan, Anthony mm. Richardson. I mean, I, yeah, I think I'd be okay doing it. Two QB, you can get burned a little bit. Like he's probably not going to have a second QB to start because he gave up Jordan Love. So that's the only question I would have about the roster. But I'm guessing it's on the shallower side. If this was a super deep league. We may see it differently, but I'm good with what he gave up with the context. So I went out and got the 102. I gave up Najee, Love, and a 24 first. So he's going to get Bijan and Anthony Richardson. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Look, Love and Najee aren't uh, – what are we, what's the word I'm looking for? High impact, high – high. although Najee, I believe, is going to be good this year, and I like Love enough. Nah, I, I make this deal, yeah. It's a lot, but whatever. You got to pay up for quarterbacks, right? Mm-hmm. Shane likes love or loves likes? I, I like love. <laughs> I like love. <laughs> I just want to see if that tongue twister would get him. 
<laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this, Scott, because you're you're a uh, team a rich at 102, but in a uh, let's say it's a six point per passing touchdown league, are you taking Anthony Richardson or B, uh, or Bryce Young? I'm still taking Richardson. Still taking Richardson. Okay. But it, if it's a two QB and it's six point passing touchdown, do you feel a lot better about having that 103 or 104? You don't feel mm. like, oh man, I'm missing out. I got to trade up. You know, like, okay, cool. I'll take whatever one falls to me. Yep. Okay. Let's, uh, let's keep on partying here. Let's go to, uh, Corey. Thank you for the super chat. 10 team start 11, super flex, 1.5 tight end premium PPR 30 man roster. Got the one one taking Pat. Okay. So this is, uh, this is a startup, I guess. Right. Yes. Yeah. Got the 101 taking uh, Mahomes, traded the 210 301 for the 110 and 710. Nice. Only team willing to trade. Anticipated top eight QB still available. However, if they're gone, how do I pivot? Too early for AR 15? It's never too early if you're Scott. I mean, you could draft him at, at, at before the draft. Um, 101 taking Pat, traded 201, 301 for 110. Only team willing to trade. Uh- he that. smashed the trade. Let's just say that. Yeah. Even, even if he misses out on the top oh, nine QBs, yeah. he smashed the trade. Yeah, that's. I'm that's just curious if, if it went QB, 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 Shane. You're at the 110. You already so, have Pat Mahomes in the holster. Who are uh, you taking? All right. So what quarterback? So the only quarterbacks left is. The top nine. Kyler. Kyler, Anthony, Anthony Richardson, Dak, Dak Stroud, Bryce. Bryce yep, those guys. Yep. Justin Jefferson. Jamar Jefferson, Chase, Chase yeah, yeah. all the Bijan are all there. God, it started 11. Oh. But doesn't it feel like if you can add, if Richardson hits with Pat Mahomes, you just if smash. If Richardson him. does hit, you do smash. You definitely do. Now, if he doesn't, um, well, guess what? You still have Pat fucking Mahomes, so you're not you're not <laughs> desperate straights. But yeah. I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a bitch lately, and I'm probably just going to go with Stroud or Young here. I might even, well, you already traded up. Here's the problem. I don't want to take either of those two at 110. God damn it. I'm taking Jefferson. No, I'm not. I'm taking Chase. I'm taking Chase. (laughs) Taking Chase. Well, okay. What would you add? What would you add to go up one spot to take Lamar Jackson or Deshaun Watson or Justin Fields? I would give a, you're not going to like this. You're not going to like it. I don't go know. ahead. What, what, do I have a fourth rounder? They want my fourth rounder. I'll give a fourth, and I'll take a f- back a, no. a fourth, a fourth, and a sixth swap. Would you do um, it, Clay? I would. No, I, I wouldn't give up that much. I would. Um, I would offer that seventh that I got. I would offer that up and ask for a thirteenth or fourteenth back. So you'd rather go lower and take just basically get a pick that's probably outside of the range that you want to do it versus giving up your fourth too. Yeah. yeah, I can see that because the fourth is still one you could move back and maybe grab an extra first. With. first. I can see that. I, I actually agree with Clay. I like that better than uh, man. I'm. It's hard for me not to take Richardson though. Really I think is. with Mahomes and Richardson, I'm I'm just taking Richardson. I'm gonna live dangerously because you know what? If I You're if I completely bust, because you still got I have Mahomes. <laughs> I know if I bust, yeah. I have Patrick Mahomes. So, so I mean, that's yeah, that's yeah. one of those places where it's like, you know what? Fuck it. This is probably the best use of this pick is just going Richardson and just going absolute upside. Um, because if you, I mean, just think about it. Imagine you had Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, that, that's mm-hmm. basically what you're looking at with his upside. Yep. Is anybody counting Shane's swear words, by the way? Um, Eric Four. has an inbox trade 10 team super flex start 12. Good for you for at least having it start 12. It's going to be a 10 team. Uh, send a 25 second and Baker Mayfield for Mixon and Gus Edwards. Team is solid, but have Brees and trash cans at running back. Baker, Baker's a trade asset. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think, take you know what? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, this is one of those where if you're ready to win, Mixon is probably like the best buy at this point, honestly. Because like what's what's to stop him from getting similar workload that he did last year, and he's being priced for, he's being priced behind guys that you know he's I'm being way priced way behind offers. like Rashad White for some reason. I'm getting the worst mix in offers every every league that I have. The most horrific horrific offers. What was it uh, this evening? Zavian Knight or Zonovan Knight, mm-hmm. and um, 
a 25 second for Joe Mixon. Or wasn't even I a mean, second, okay. a 24 third and nine. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, if someone is sending you a trade that includes a second round pick, you can't say that's a terrible offer. Right. If it's a well, third and a filler running back, yeah, that wouldn't do that. But if it's a second, okay, that's not, that's not, you might not take yeah. it, but that's not a terrible offer. Dude, yeah, I, yeah give, give me, um, uh, all the mix in there. I, I'm still waiting for him to get cut. He's been getting cut for like, for yeah, years yeah, now yeah right like, so i know he's not he, he's not going to get cut they have nothing I, else to spend I, the I money on they so keep telling unless I, they he's not going to get, get cut. cut i don't care if he gets cut i could give a shit if he gets cut. he's not <laughs> i could give a heck if he gets cut let's go pg the rest of the way i don't give a Dalvin dollar. cook will get cut. Could get cut i'll take all of those cut guys you give me him you give me joe mixon alvin kamara after he gets out of prison the only guy i don't want that was cut was ezekiel elliott because he's absolutely washed you want leonard fournette yeah, I wish someone would sign him already. And Kareem Hunt. Yeah, and yeah. Zeke. They have no. Here's the thing: those guys have no incentive. This. Why would one of those guys want to go to training camp? Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna show up during the season when somebody needs me. Okay, I'll come in on a Tuesday and I'm taking carries on Sunday. There's no way like Fournette's gonna go through a training camp. Why would he? He's gonna make two million a year. There's no reason for him to show up now. Let's see. Um, one second. Scott often talks. Let's do this one. Scott often talks talks about warp to look at roster construction. A few years ago, Jeff Stathole talked about using a player's average war warp versus the previous season to find buys and sells. Is this a good way to look at buys and sells? Hmm. Send me that if Seth has it. Send me it on Twitter. I think. As I dive more into warp and stay tuned, because we're going to be doing a little more content on it, my Patreon, Destination Dynasty, and all that, there's going to be more warp content coming. I think the one thing I struggle with is you literally cannot look at a player's historical warp and say it's at all predictive. You have to look at the prototype or the archetype of the situation and the player. And of course, if the player is in the same situation as they were a year ago, you can probably say, okay, there's a reasonable assumption that their warp could be similar. But I don't think you can just look at the number from two years ago and then last year and then whatever it is this year when the season starts to be like, yeah, I'm going to sell or I'm going to buy. But tell me more. I don't know more. I don't I need to see what he's talking about. Like, I need Mm -hmm. to look at it to have a better assessment. So have you looked at the R yet? R correlation. (laughs) Put it on the graph. Do a a redundancy date graph and let me know what happens. Graphs are good. Graphs are good because you can take. You can glance at graphs and you can go, hey, I, the lines are going in this direction or that direction, and yes. the colors are here and here and here. Yes. People can get stuff from that. So that's but what I'm trying to bring, and I'm not doing it. I'm just finding other people's work and being like, this is good work. Look at that. Yeah, but I also would like that too, Seth. I, I like to get into things to because I have thoughts on warp, but I would like to see that uh, data, please. Uh, send it to Scott and Shane. Um, cannabis, I like this uh, this avatar and uh, and name here. So, look at that. It's it's like the like so much. What is that god? It's like that god and he's smoking a blunt. Yeah, the little dog thing, little dog god. <laughs> just yeah, did that great. all be there? Dog god smoking a blunt. Dog god. Yeah. Uh, okay. Took Kincaid at one ten in a non tight end premium and feel I made a mistake. Would you flip him for a random twenty four first since I have Hawk starting? Thanks. Yes, I would. Well, yeah. So even if you just take the, name, take the name out of it, right? One ten. One ten for twenty four. One ten for a random twenty four first. Yes, I would. And in what I, 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 it was funny. I was looking at my roster ship of Kincaid, who I've been um, touting all over the place. I own him in uh, uh, two leagues. <laughs> you only have him in two leagues. Yeah. yeah. So clearly, I haven't been as comfortable with taking him at that one ten mm-hmm. range as I thought I was. I keep taking Michael Myers, um, like three or four picks after that because he's cheaper. But yeah, to just take the name out of it, you would flip that all day for a twenty four first. Yes, we would. Okay. And I did turn off uh, Super Chats. Uh, thank you for everyone who, who sent them in. We appreciate it. We got a lot to uh, lot to run through here. Um, let me hide this current comment. All right. Let's go to this one right here from eSlack. One of two. Thank you for the Super Chat. 
12 team PPR, one QB start eight, went from a complete rebuild to contending after this trade, among a few others. Gave the 106, 107, 109, 25 first, 24 third, Bellinger and Kelly. Got Kelsey, Tyreek, Eckler, and Chubb. <laughs> oh my Bro. gosh. The, I mean, yeah. Here's the second part. My team is now uh, Hertz, Bijan, Brees, Eckler, Chubb, wide receivers, Chase, Tyreek, Devontae, tight ends, Kelsey, 524 first. One is, one is from a rebuilding team, so 101, 102 lock, 124 second. How did I do? Well, first off, you did quite well paying to brag, so thank you again for that super chat. But, um, yeah, look at this trade, man. That What is that other person thinking? It's a, it's a 1QB. 1QB start eight and gets the 106, 7, 9, and 25 first. Because they don't, they don't understand value, player values. They don't understand uh, the difference between like what a wide receiver one brings to your team. And I know this was a tight end trade. But they don't understand the difference between what a wide receiver, an elite wide receiver one is, what a, an elite player does in a, in a roster, in a starting excuse me, in a small starting line roster size like this. They just don't understand what they're doing. They just think mm -hmm. I'm getting more. More is better. Like more is not always better. I, I tried to tell my ex-wife that, but you know, whatever. Um, more is not always better. And it's as simple as that. They just don't understand that. I mean, this was a team that was probably a contender that just got bored. Hmm. Goes, I'm going to give my team to Blow East Slack and let him try to get to East Slack. That's essentially what he did. You do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, if, the, if the other team had those four players in a start eight, you're probably like, man, he like won the championship last yeah. year. Now he just got bored and he wanted draft picks. And yeah. look, sometimes you do just get bored. I get it. If you want a title, you can do whatever you want at that point. It's like, hey, it's fun to rebuild this. So I'm just going to tear it down from scratch and go. Yep. Okay, let's uh let's go to another um to another comment here. Let's go to Simon Josephs. Thank you for the super chat. 12 team superflex PPR start 11. Sell Burks for Elijah Moore and a 24 first. Yes. Yes, easy. The start 11 too. Like that's um yeah, that's a big win. I, I mean, sell Burks Elijah for a 24 Moore. first, right? Yeah, you get yeah. a free Elijah Moore too. So, that's awesome. Good job. Yep, great trade. Great trade. Um, what else is on your mind, guys? Complete any trades today? Uh, a few. Yeah. 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 Pull pull one up while I uh, while I pull up another question that Scott will start. Pull up pull up a couple of your trades, Shane. Here's the dude. Thank you for the super chat. Twelve teams start ten super flex PPR short benches. QBs are Allen, T Law, and Tua. Running back Saquon, Bijan, Roshan. Wide receivers are CD, Waddle, Hollywood, and then two thresholds. Tight end Goddard and Hurst. Give Waddle, get Zay Flowers, and a 24 first projected late. Hmm, what do you think about that process, Scott? 12 teams start 10. I don't hate it. I think there's other places you can probably extract some value here. We talked about this earlier. Can you move Tua for a pivot down? Can you get a receiver and a second or something for Tua? Or can you get another quarterback and another piece for Tua? Like, that's where I'd start. The problem is not a lot of people are like, hey, I'm really excited to have Tua. So really, what's the, how far down can you go and what can you get on top? But if I can move Tua for, who would be the lowest common dominator quarterback you can think of? Tua for a first and Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill, I was like about that. to say, yep. First and Tannehill and then turn around and I have more flexibility now with that extra first. I can literally go buy another threshold receiver. I can probably go buy Zay Flowers for a first and do it that way instead of essentially tacking on, you know, the the waddle piece in there. Yeah, I get the extra mm -hmm. first, but I still have kind of a overinflation of assets at my QB three, which I don't need. Okay. Shane. I, I made a good <laughs> trade. What was your I trade? Made, I made a trade today. And this trade is just to tell people one, because there's some, you know, comments sometimes that we just love rookie picks and we hate running backs. And I think this trade dispels most of those myths, right? We, we care about situation more than anything. Um, today, and you're in this league, Clay, I gave up the 112 and a 24 first, uh, my own. Um, and I got Mr. Saquon Barkley 
and a 305. Um, and now I add Mr. Barkley to my running back room, which is uh, Brees Hall and Bijan Robinson. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I can be praying for the to the ACL gods. So I made that <laughs> trade. Good for you. What do you think about that, Scott? 112 and a 24 first? Or I don't please? want to say I hate it. I Do I want to? I get it. He probably was. Were you stuck with that 112, Shane? Did you feel like you were going to get stuck in no man's land with it? Is nah, that a start 12, Shane? Is that a yeah. start 12 league? No, no, no. I think this is a baby one. It's only start 11 or 10. Um, I was going to probably go with Will Levis, who actually went right off the board right before me. Um, what was the premium? Was it? Was it? Did the tight ends matter at all? It's it's an HQ league, so it's like 1.05. Oh, 1. yeah, 5. this is HQ6. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, the premium doesn't matter. So you're in the dead zone where you would have had to pick Zach Charbonnet, mm-hmm. Devon A-Chain, Kendra Miller, or a tight it's end when it really doesn't starters. matter much. Yeah, it's a baby league, 10 starters. Yeah. I'm okay I, with it. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Okay, let's um let's keep rolling here. Uh, let's go to Matthew says, need some more auction startup content feel we are seeing more people dive into those yep we're gonna do uh we're gonna do some of that for sure and scott wants to do auction listener leagues scott is um scott's too big of a deal for snake drafts right now figured we just air that out in front of our 402 subscribers who have already hit the like yep no more snakes no more snakes for scott (laughs) okay let's go to uh let's go to tyler here Thank you for the super one QB half PPR start nine traded DJ Moore, Javante, the one Oh two and Waddle received Jamar chase early 24 second and the one Oh three already have Jefferson. What do you guys think? So in a start nine to one QB, you basically traded chase or you got chase for Waddle and DJ Moore. In whatever the price is, and then you got you flip the 102 and 103, which is probably just the difference between your choice of Gibbs and JSN, whatever you prefer. Yeah, give me the Chase side here. Chase yeah. Jefferson in a shallow start nine, I'll take that. Plus, I have the 103 to play with. Yeah, that feels like that's a team that's uh, set to crush. I like this even in a start 10. Um, I'd probably talk myself into it and start 11 incorrectly, um, but we're not there. It's a start nine. Yeah, I'm doing this. It's only half PPR, though. But mm-hmm. all the guys you're trading, like DJM, DJM, Jesus. DJ Moore is more effective by half PPR than uh, Jamar Chase is. So he's even worth less um, in this format. So, no, I like this deal. Look, you're buying hammers. You got to pay up. This is what you do with them. You consolidate. And Tyler also said, as the two of two, love the show. Just want to thank you guys for being the most consistent and in-depth show on YouTube. Keep it up, fellas. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate Appreciate you, Tyler. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's uh, let's keep on keeping on here. We got a short one from from James. Thank you, sir. 12-team, half PPR, 1QB, start nine. Trade A.J. Brown for Barkley and a 24 first. Other wide receivers are JJ, Chase, Lamb, Jeez. Wilson, JSN, RBs are Stevenson, Gibbs, and Charps. Tuesdays. Well, Shane, I, it's I a would, half PPR, so you it. like this trade, but you're trading AJ Brown, who is your what, sixth best receiver. Well, fifth okay. best receiver. I mean, come on. Third best wide receiver on this team, but yeah, I'm gonna let him go for it's a half. It's a half PPR. He only has the other four top five receivers on his roster, so somehow he managed to get all the top five receivers in Dynasty, and then someone handed him this trade. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna call you Jim. Yeah, you you, good deal, Jim. Yeah, he's he's not James for that, right? He's Mm -hmm. he's Jim. Jim did. He'll (laughs) he'll get a nickname if he pulls off another good one like that, Mm -hmm. right? Jimbo. Okay. Um, let's see here. This is just a thanks from RM32. Thanks for the work you guys do. Tuesday is the worst day of the work week, in my opinion. And I look forward to this show. Yeah, man. We love our Tuesday. That's crowd. a good comment. That's yeah, a good yeah it comment. is. Thank you. We appreciate it. I, uh, my job hasn't been, my job's been pretty chill for the last few months since we got people in place. But I remember when Tuesdays were absolute shit shows and, uh, just doing this show was always a good thing for me. And it yep. still is. It still is. Okay. So part one, um, thank you for the super chat. Gina Cora, 
we'll go with that. Part one, Dynasty Virgin Virgins starting our first this year. Well, congratulations. Welcome to Dynasty. It's a uh, it's a powerful um, and aggressive disease. We want robust trade market and contenders and rebuilders alike to have hope every year for long-term retention. Part two, 10 team thinking one QB, two running backs, two wide receivers, super flex, tight end, three flex, and then one IDP. So 11 starters, tight end premium, 17 bench, four taxis. Also thought on ethical ways to tank. So what do you think about this setup? Wants to do a 10 team start 11 super flex with an IDP. Yeah. So it's a start 10. Um, I'm not counting, counting that IDP person. You can call them whatever you want. Um, <laughs> IDP I, person. <laughs> here's the thing. If, you, if you're going to do IDP, doing one IDP player to me isn't doing IDP. For that, you might as well just play team defense. Um, so either add more IDP, which I don't believe I've ever advocated for in my entire life, um, or just scrap that and make that another starter, which is what I'd like it to be. Uh, like you to do and a start 11 yeah that's fun tight end premium uh 1.75 or it's not real um two if you want to be serious about it what's four ts four taxi squad sure um ethical ways to tank look i you tank however you want my only thing is if a guy's not playing that week he can't be in your starting roster that's literally it and if you want you do what potential points and that'll take care of any like real tanking concerns that you have Mm mm-hmm Max potential points. Scott, yeah, what do you think about go, this format? When I was a kid, I used to go to a lake with all my, I come from a huge family with a ton of cousins and they would always like, oh man, the lake's too cold. Like dip your toe in. I'll just push them in. That's the IDP, you know, like don't even bother. If you're not going to go with like a full defensive setup, don't even bother with the IDP. One, literally they are meaningless. You can pick mm. them up off waivers. They're meaningless. I'll just say this. You can have as many teams as you want. The scoring, the setup of the starting lineup, all of that, 40% starting players to total roster spots ratio, and that includes the taxi. With what he has right here, he's looking at 10 team, 28 it's players with a four man taxi. The, no, it's too deep. Or, or I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. With 10, 10 starters with 32 available. roster right. spots, it creates 15 to 20 spots on the back end of your bench that the league is going to quickly go. Those are pointless. Everyone's just going to keep trying to get hammers and trade up and trade up. That's one of the biggest things in the league. You have to have the ratios right to where if you're going to do a start 11, you want to have 30, 32 man benches or 32, 30, 30 to 32 man rosters. Uh-huh. If you're going to do start nine, you better not make it 32 man rosters because you're just creating dead spots where everyone's going to go. Shane's going to bitch about the fourth and fifth round picks in a start nine. Cause what's the point, right? If you're going to do fifth round picks, it needs to be uh-huh. a start 13. Uh-huh. So just make sure everything is kind of like it flows and it correlates with this setting to this setting to this setting. If you're going to do potential points, get rid of the taxi squad. What's the point? Just add it to your roster. So just, just make sure everything is aligned. League will be fine. It'll take care of itself. The managers, if they're not active, it's because they're not active. Now, if they're not active because it's 35-man rosters and start eight, that, that's your problem, the yeah, way you yeah. set it up. So don't don't start it and get yourself into those pickles right away. Sounds good. Good stuff there. Yeah, and we've actually got a, a short show that's going to be coming out. Um, we'll call it Thursday. Um, it's just, yeah, like 10 minutes or so talking about format tweaks and, and things like that. I, I cut a I cut a longer show into uh, into a couple parts. Um, you just mentioned flow, and that would flow better. So okay, let's keep rolling here. Let's move on to um, we already did the dude. Let's go to Robert here. Thank you for the super chat. In the middle of a twelve team start ten super flex PPR one point five tight end premium startup draft. Had the one eleven and went Anthony Richardson. Kyler, Andrews, DK, Addison, Jamison Williams, Marquise Brown. Shane and I both did the same thing. We made the same <laughs> face, the exact same face. Uh, Marquise Brown, Cousins, Carr, Chig, C2 of two. Wanted to tank, but Andrews, Cousins, Carr were too good at value. Where do I go from here? Do we get one mulligan pick? Yeah, can we, can we mulligan that Chiggy? 
the Chiggy Akonkwo pick, please? Uh, oh, Chig. <laughs> so what? What? I'm just so he wanted to tank, so he went AR and Kyler. He's like, all right, well, AR is probably not going to start this year. And then he realized he has Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr, well, basically, is like seventh or eighth round value. Yeah, so he went with like AR and Kyler, and he's like, hey, all right, well, that I'm I'm gonna I'm punting for next year. I'll get Andrews though because he's going to be good for a while. So is DK. So is Addison. I, I don't know. You were smoking crack when you drafted Jameson. Whatever it happens, we all fat finger uh, picks and don't want to admit it and ask people to just take it off the board because they get all mad when you're like, oh, can we reverse that pick? And they're like, you're an amateur. But that said, with getting Brown, Carr, and Cousins, yeah, I don't think you're in a position where you can actually tank um, unless you wanted to put some of your guys on the, the taxi, but you would need like fourth year taxi squad guys. So this is a good problem to have, though, because look at your quarterback room after week eight when Kyler gets back. And when yeah. AR is like, – AR is probably going to score fantasy points from week one, let's be honest. I mean, even if he's not a good quarterback, he's still going to score fantasy points. Notice how zero uh, running backs were were mentioned here, and that's and that's not a bad thing. It's just no, none were mentioned. So I guess he really was trying to do the tank thing. And just uh, just punt the whole running. Oh, back. I mean, he was. He went Addison as a rookie. Yeah. Jamison Williams suspended. Marquise Brown without <laughs> Kyler. Like he was leaning into that tank until yeah. Cousins, Carr, and Chiggy. Cousins, Carr, and Chiggy. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have one Mulligan pick? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for that super chat, man. Uh, let's go. Let's see if we have any. Just grab one from the live. It's Anabis Clay. It's Anabis. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you, Sandiford. Appreciate that. Got it. Why does dude hate JMO? Let's answer Buster McRib here. Why do we yeah, hate JMO? My dude or you, dude? Shane is the, Shane is the Your dude. dude. I'll, just, I'll point over here to Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mostly it was the uh, 1.5 fantasy points per game he scored in his four games. <laughs> Um, yes, I, 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 I understand that apparently they had a plan to not play him at all and use him as a gunner. Um, and then he went and got himself suspended for six games. So it just hasn't started out very well. Like, yes, we knew he was going to miss time last year. I was even willing, and I drafted him in leagues and I was willing to give him, okay, but he needs to come out and he needs to pop a little bit. Give me 10 points a game. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm not asking for a lot. I'm not a greedy man. Give me 10 points. But when you give me negative three points a game or whatever it is he scored, um, I'm a little concerned. And then when you get your ass suspended for the first six, day, six games of the next season, it's just not – it doesn't – it's not turning out well. And, and this isn't that I'm just making this stuff up. It's if you don't perform as a rookie, no matter how many games you play, you generally are not going to be a viable fantasy asset. But that's all. You know what's interesting about Jameson Williams is – I believe he played six games last year mm -hmm. and he's going to miss six games this year, which means how many games is he going to play through two years? If he plays the rest of the games this year that he's eligible for what's six plus 11, yeah, 17. I was about to say 17, that's 17. Now, you know who else has played 17 games that the community hates. And he's posted actually 60 catches, 800 yards in those 17 games. Rashad, Rashad Bateman. Bateman. Yeah. 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 So that's I'm just saying Jameson Williams needs what? 50 plus over 700 yards in his 11 games this year to go. Okay. He started out like Rashad Bateman's career, 59 receptions to be exact. 59, yeah. 50, and like 742 yards or something to equal Rashad Bateman. But we don't like Rashad Bateman. And I'm guessing the lions probably will draft the receiver next year. I, I, I think there's probably a pretty good chance. So I, I think that that's the reason why if you plug him into a cohort and you look at his numbers, you go, okay, he's going to enter year three with numbers that do not project to be anything more than cool. He's a replaceable receiver. That's why we don't like JMO. It's nothing to do with his talent. Like he's just missed. He's missed the biggest window that he needs to pop. And it, it's, it's, he has to prove it in a very short time span now. Yes, he does. Okay. Let's go to um, this right here. David, thank you for the super chat. Literally the least I could give for the fantastic insight and knowledge you provide. Thanks, man. Topic, new dynasty players. 2023 equals first season. Congrats. Startup and rookie drafts done. What to do now before football begins in September? Thank you. No, that's a great question. I mean, that I, I ask Scott and Shane that all the time when we're, when we're talking about show ideas and stuff. It's like, okay, it's Tuesday, May 23rd right now. Like, what's the next, what's the next big event that we can look forward to? And Scott, we've got kind of a, kind of a dead period coming up or a quieter period. 
I mean, yeah, I think it's for us content creators and somebody that plays in 50 leagues and is doing, you know, four or five shows a week. Like it isn't terrible to have (laughs) a dead period, especially during the season, just given that, I mean, I, we can see a show of hands in the chat, how much of a rat race the NFL season is at this point. It is, I mean, you think it's a long week during the season. It's. You still have games to follow, lineups to set. Then you have waiver wires to hit. Not Forget about content creators, literally just players that are trying to track injuries, set Thursday night lineups, Saturday night lineups, Sunday lineups, Monday night lineups, juggle all the... I mean, it's exhausting. So I'm okay with just kind of talking through theory, strategy. I just did the show on Destination Dynasty this weekend where it was like, okay, how would you differ with your startup strategy now versus in January or February? If you said, hey, I don't want to add any leagues until February, because that's when I think my biggest edge is, and I don't want to draft a startup in July. All the stuff that you're able to gamble on and take bets on is it's kind of done at that point, right? Everyone knows free agency, rookie landing spots, rookie player values, all that stuff. So just chill, you know, think about ways you can improve your team and take some big bets where other people don't see it coming. I think that's the one thing I'll be trying to do and focus more on my leagues that I already have, trying to take advantage of people and get their like 24 picks or their 25 picks at pretty good value. You know, that's, that's a huge thing you can try to do. I I think too, if you're, if you're new to dynasty, this is your first year, like really like our show, if you're new to the show, first off, welcome. Um, But yeah, look at your roster construction look at your settings, look at the format of your league, make sure that what you draft in the startup and, and the rookie draft and all lines up. So at least get your get everything in order to decide what you need to address in the off season. But but take a peek at your your settings, your format, your roster construction. Make sure that's tight. And Scott has um, lots of people have asked, <coughs> excuse me, where to find uh, Destination Dynasty in America's game. So you go to your podcast player. You go to Destination Debbie Radio. Scott has his show uh, America's Game with Eric, and he's got Destination Dynasty on there. If you go to, I believe it was October, October or November in Destination Dynasty, Scott started the roster construction series. Listen to that and see uh, see if you're lined up. Okay, let's keep rolling here. Thank you for that super chat, man. And um, and yeah, feel free to reach out with uh, with questions in the off season, obviously. Okay. BW, any rookie QBs outside the top four you'd want to stash in a super flex league? Stetson, DTR, Hall, etc. I got a lot of Dorian. (laughs) Or not a lot, but I got like three or four of them. I've got a ton of the uh, Raiders rookie quarterback. Uh, Is that Aiden O'Connell? Or is Shout he, out to my co-host Eric, the biggest Aiden O'Connell fan I know. But yes, Aiden O'Connell. Uh, yeah, I was I was listening to that the other day when he was talking about all the Aiden O'Connell he has. I have him in seventeen percent of my leagues. Um, I'm going to round up. It's eighteen percent of my leagues because um, every time I'm in the fourth round, I go, "Well, let's go." I could go with this running back that's a not even on a team, literally not on a team. Uh, no team picked him up. Um, or I go with this quarterback who's behind one of the guys that that's parentally injured. I'm going to go with that guy. So I've been grabbing a lot of him. I've been grabbing a lot of Derek Carr's backup. I forget his name. Um, Jay Kaner, right? Pretty boy. Uh, he's a model. So he's probably, well, it's, gonna- that's one of the ones I struggle with because they still have Jameis Winston. I would guess he's probably the backup, but uh, I, uh, Jay Kaner's a guy you can add. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Fine. Look, any of these guys that look, people want to believe in Brock Purdy, like they want the Brock Purdy narrative. So any of these dudes that that I, I, I look think if they could get a starter to and I could flip is, is who I'm grabbing. Okay, so Dorian Pounce. All righty, let's go to this one here, Jungle Jim. Thank you, Jungle Jim. Ten team super flex start nine. QBs are Allen and Fields. Running backs are Ramondre, Brees, Rashad White. Kendra Miller, wide receivers, AJB, DK, Godwin, JMO, QJ, Addison, Bateman, tight end, Pitts. Trade offer on the table. I give up DK, Ramondre, and a 24 mid to late first. I get Jefferson. What side? 10 team, Superflex start nine. I'm good taking the Jefferson side here. It's 10 team start nine, 90 starters, 12 team equivalent, like seven and a half. Late first, 
dings his running back depth a little bit, but you only have, you know, Brees Hall and Rashad White, so you're fine. I, I'm good with it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, do it. What if what if that were a uh what if it were a start ten? Is that even an issue? Just trying to give the uh give the crowd an idea of start nine versus start ten. Start ten, I'd start thinking about it more like, oh, I don't know, do I have the depth for this? Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But man, I mean it is the three first for Jefferson, right? In a start yeah. ten or more, you can at least start saying, Okay, like there there's gonna be the right team in a lot of leagues that would go my team's terrible but i have justin jefferson is that the deal that can kind of reboot me closer to where i want to go and then you can probably flip her mandre for a first and another running back or you know whatever it is it's a cascade deal that gives you a lot more flexibility but yeah start nine right. ten team you're taking the jefferson side what do yeah. we always talk about like just the fact that he's available like you know how many yep. leagues i look at and like jefferson's on the trade block and i go to send an offer and i'm like i don't even know what to send like, I legitimately have no idea what to try to send this person. So someone's going to make it easy for me, put it on the table. At least I can go, all right, yeah, I can live with that. <laughs> this is great. Cool World TDE. My son's name is Nico, LOL. He just turned his head when you said he didn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. I love that name for, for a kid, too. I, I know another uh, young Nico. Um, okay, let's go to um, let's go to this KMH Scott. Thanks for always helping us fans. Just wanted to pass that along. You're the man. Yeah, Scott and Shane do a ton of DMing with our uh, with our community, our listeners, our uh, our lovely subs. They they put in a lot of a lot of work, so we appreciate that KMH. Okay, let's. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll read another funny one. All right, Teron Kane, trade with Shane. Traded the 118, 219, 24 first for Pitts and James Cook. Did you do shout that? Shout out Shane? to yeah. shout out to Big T. That's a league we're all in. Yeah. I'm in it. It's a D, that's a DCHQ league. I was oh, sure. it's a copy like, league. Yeah. Yep. Got yeah, it. Hence the 118. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got the I've got the I, MFL uh, the MFL emails filter. All well, I'm curious because this is essentially there is a toilet bowl pick, so it pushes Shane's pick mm-hmm. to the 210. So the 109, the 210, and the 24 first for Kyle Pitts and James Cook. Was this just you needed to add asset, Shane? Yeah. So this is a start. 12 12 start, start 12 yep start 12 uh this 175 team, ppr so basically yeah, 175 ppr a lot for ppr um also this is a league where hey not surprisingly not a lot of trading goes on because everybody's fucking super sharp and afraid to make mistakes because god forbid you make a mistake in front of a sharp person oh no um <laughs> so you know again i looked at my 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 what was my my out my outlook of getting other offers for him um, wasn't going to be great knowing the room. Um, so just split the <laughs> asset, get a couple first. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. Like I definitely need more assets than I do a Kyle Pitts. I, I'll just say this. This is one of the most underrated things about what Shane just said. There have been so many times where leagues that I am in with all and we go back on some leagues four or five years with DNC and HQ patrons that have been in existence for a while. And you just know, you look at a trade and you go like that, like I've, and I've been crass enough to DM other people. And I go, dude, you're not getting a better offer than this. I'm going to send you a first and a second yeah. for this player. You are never getting a better offer. Now you can decline it, but just knowing who's in the league, like, first of all, there's nobody even else sending you an offer. But the fact that I'm willing to send you one like close to what you're asking for or close to market, like you just say, hey, this is the best offer you're ever going to get. Take it or don't. Yep. Yep. Vince Williams inbox offer. He's there's two exclamation points in this one. He clearly needs our help. Just finished the startup draft. My Mahomes for his fields 24 first, 24 second, 25 first. I haven't been able to bring myself to hit, to hit accept yet. Help. You doing that? You trading Mahomes for Fields, 24 first and second and 25 first? No. So here's the problem. There's no context to the trade. Let's say it's it, let's it, say it's, it's a six it, point per passing touchdown, 12 team, super flex star 10. 
in a start 10, it feels like if, unless you were just a completely asset poor team, it's not the trade I'd be looking to do. If I have Justin Fields, though, I'm not adding two first to go get Patrick Mahomes because I'm probably willing to gamble on Fields bridging the gap, gap close enough to Mahomes that I can use those firsts in different ways. Uh, see, as the Fields owner, I'd be fine with making this deal if you're going to let me spread this paint out through 25. You know what I mean? Like, here's a first this year. Here's one from 25. Like, just keep pushing it out. Like, that's credit card debt. Like, I'm basically the New Orleans Saints in this league. Like, if you're going to let me do that, I'm more apt to do it. If you would have forced me to make this a 23 and a 24 first, ooh, I don't know. Then it's like, oh, I can. But wouldn't the 23 matter about where it is? Well, yeah, yeah. So, so let's say it's a mid 23 and uh 24. But it, you know, even if it was two 24s, it definitely would make me feel a little bit more like, oh, that pain's going to be soon, as opposed to like I'm getting kicked in the nuts two years down the road. It. I'll just say this from the way I roster construct, I would be uncomfortable on both sides of the trade unless the format goes, okay, the format dictates it's a smash for one side or the other. Mm. I'm in some leagues, 14 teams start 13. I would take the fields in the first sides. Yeah. But then there's other leagues where you go, just give me my homes. I don't even want to deal with it. So there's probably the somewhere in between, but until you've done that calculation, it's just not a trade I'm going to seek out if I have fields. Right. Sergio SXP92. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Shane looked a couple times and, and couldn't find a, a question attached to this. So email dynasty trades in five at gmail.com um, with miss super chat as the subject line and, and let us know if you had a, if you had a question here. Um, thank you though. So let's keep on uh, rolling here. We got MGH MJH 87 12 team. Look at that. It's, it's almost like a hammer. It's an ax in a, uh, in a log there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hammer. Well, that's a hammer. It's that's a, a hammer, hammer of, it's, it's a, a sharp, sharp hammer. hammer. Yeah. It's a sharp hammer. Yeah. Uh, 12 team half PPR start eight. Thank you for the super chat. T law Dobbins, ETN, Alave, Metcalf, Amari, Kelsey flex is open. I have the one Oh one and one Oh two, obviously taking Bijan. What type of trade would be worth doing to not take Gibbs? Love the show. Uh, so it's one QB, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Half QB. PPR. Brees Hall. Uh, uh, there's literally like three players. Like it's like Brees Hall, JT, and nope, Jefferson and uh, Chase. So even in the half PPR, that's what I'd be using the 102 for. AJ Brown, maybe. I don't know. That's my Eagles green. I don't always like to throw that out there because then people think it's just biases. Uh, no, you're not biased. I think if you got if you got Lamb, Garrett Wilson, AJ, like you could you could stomach just doing a one for one trade. Yeah. Maybe if you add you add a meaningless piece in a start eight, add a second, add two seconds, whatever. But but yeah, that's the waters you're fishing in. Like you're going to the top twenty or better players, and like those are the only players I'm interested in. Yeah. And I probably shoot at the very top and just move my way down to a point where you go, okay, I've hit the Gibbs range. I might as well just draft the player. Instead of try to add to the trade, you know, just draft him. Just to give me an idea, in a 12 team half PPR start eight, the 102 or 224 first, call a mid. Uh, the, the 102. The 102. It's, just, it's a start eight. I don't want to give up unless I just know your team's horrible. Yeah. And it, it's, it's got to be the 102. Cause I mean, this is one where you just add the player to your roster and it's, what does Shane always say? That's 12.5% of my team. I just added the stud. Why would I break that into multiple pieces when I don't have to? And the math is usually correct. <laughs> Shane, you get you pulling one up? Oh, uh, I'm really, uh, this goes from uh, Flower Saurus. Yeah. I'm really surprised they haven't said, fuck it. Let's do a 24 hour <laughs> trade show special and get like a month's salary. Easy. Well, hey, just so since you happen to mention it, Flow of Saurus. Um, oh, it's Flow, not Flower. Flow a source that makes more sense. He's probably a rapper, Flow a source, anyway. Um, <laughs> a rapping dinosaur, anyway. Flow a source, we are going to be doing a mega stream. Um, not 24 hours, it is going to be five hours. We agree, Dynasty on. Trades and five hour stream. Five hour stream, uh, we're going to be doing that on hey. June. The get the date right, Shane. Yeah, we got to get it right, June. the um the 10th is the second saturday in june is that what we're doing june the 10th i 
Yeah. It was either June the 10th or June the 17th. So I guess we're, <laughs> we're deciding live June. June the 10th. It was a thousand percent. It was definitely June 17th. Clay has made a audible, decided it is on June 10th. So June 10th, we will be doing a five hour Dynasty Trades in five mega stream, um, I believe, from the hours of uh, six seven to midnight. Exactly. Seven p.m. <laughs> you guys Eastern. don't even know the date or the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seven yeah. p.m. We've got one coming up. We've got Eastern one coming up. Standard time. And it's going to be the 10th because fuck it. We said it's going to be the 10th. It's going to be the 10th, bros and broettes. Yeah. We're, and, we're embarrassing ourselves in front of the rapping dinosaur here. Uh, okay. Can you, that can was you good. That? Yeah. He is a rapping dinosaur. That is good. That's, that's like a Komodo dragon in that. Um, yeah. This, this was one uh, that was good. I'd love a commissioner series on starting new leagues, make leagues more exciting, et cetera. I love the show, guys. Yeah. We appreciate that idea. And, uh, part of this show that's going to be coming out on on Thursday, the short show, uh, talks about things to, to make leagues more exciting. But thank you for that idea. We'll definitely uh, definitely do that. Okay, let's um, go to this one here from Will. Thank you for the super chat. Ten team super flex start ten QBs are Kyler and AR. Uh, traded Drake London, 24 first, 25 first, and a 24 second. Got Justin Herbert. How did I do? I like it. It's a 10 team, 10 but team. yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, Herbert becomes available. It gives you really, you can hedge your bets on Richardson and Kyler. So I'm good with that. Yeah, I, I'm fine with it. I mean, Herbert's at that low end of the elite quarterback schism for us i don't think that's the exact that's not how you use that word but um no not at all he's um he's at the bottom of that elite tier but he's still elite he's still in that elite tier so yeah i'm, I'm fine with this i think he's gonna have like a massive massive season for some reason Forty nine thousand yards 4, just just, just yards. a stupid just a stupid year i look if mike williams uh Mike Williams might play all year. He's got Quentin Johnston, Josh no, Palmer. No way. Listen to what you just said there. Mike Williams is going to play all year. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go to this one here from Patrick Marash. Thank you for the super. Orphan, I took over. Need some serious help. 12-team, super flex, start 10, PPR, 0.5 tight end premium. It's four point per pass touchdown. Assets with any trade value are Mahomes, Dak, Jimmy G, JT, Alave, Kirk. All my own picks from 24 to 26. Is this a team where you just blow it up completely and go into full rebuild slash tank mode? Are there any players you would look to hold on to for the potential rebuild if possible? I don't it's a weird think team because it's to... not it's not a bad team. Yeah, I mean, so it, I'm just guessing that he named literally all the decent assets. Yeah, right? that's everything yeah. he has. That's, that's everything. JT Alave. So as a foursome, that's good. Uh, start 10, yeah, you probably need a couple other starters in there. Like you named Jimmy G, so that's not great. And then Kirk. Um, I don't know if you need to go full on rebuild, re-blow it up. That's not what I wanted to say, blow it up. But like maybe looking to move JT. JT. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Maybe looking to see if I can't <clears throat> tear down from Dak and get a, a, a younger quarterback and a pick for him. Um, and that pick like in the first range. Um, might be something that I would investigate. Yeah, and I'm also fine if you can pivot like Dak to Kyler. If you can dump Christian Kirk, I'm fine doing that. Take on all the yuckiness of a lesser receiver. Can you move Christian Kirk and Jimmy G for Quentin Johnston in a couple seconds or something like that? Like so something where you kind of mm -hmm. get the leverage, but you also mask a couple of your pieces to a team that wants points. Um, you got to get more assets, which means you have to split the right ones. But I definitely mm -hmm. think JT, Jimmy G, uh, Kirk, and and Dak, if you ended up with like seven assets out of those, you could be on your way to shifting more towards contending next year. It could be a pretty quick turnaround with Mahomes. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty pretty decent orphan. Not not bad. You see him a lot worse than that. That's you don't sure. see a lot of Mahomes teams that are no, orphans. No, that are orphans. No. Right. I remember there's that um what is it that site like a uh, Dynasty Depot or something like that where you can buy and sell um, teams. No, it was safe. It was safe leagues. They had a Mahomes. They had a 
Is that oh, what you're talking about? The safe, safe league, league teams that went for 12 times the buy-in? Yeah, yeah, because it had the 101 and Mahomes and like it was, it was a like solid Mahomes, team. Herbert, yeah. Lawrence, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it was ridiculous. But yeah, someone literally paid 12 times the buy-in just to have the team. Just, they had to like win three asset. straight titles just to break even. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just an asset. Like a startup makes money after a few years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you for that. Super. Let's go to Josh here. One of two hashtag QB struggles. Uh oh, really need to upgrade QB and then I'll be ready to compete. Have Russ Stafford AR 15. How much is too much to pay when I need a solid QB one super flex start nine PPR six point per passing touchdown. No tight end premium. And the two of two, he's got Ramondre, Bijan, McKinnon, Garrett Wilson, Alave, Jamo, Addison, Judy, Pittman, tight end, Hurst, and uh, Juwan Johnson. What assets would you look to package with Russ or Stafford or pivot from AR and Pittman? Well, first, test your uh, league mates' intelligence and offer them Jamo and Russ. Um, and while you're at it, you can throw it back. go back to that second. Uh, there you go. Sure. Uh, they can have JMO, they can have Judy and Russ. What can, what can I get from you for that? Try that first. I mean, I'm not pivoting off of Anthony Richardson. That defeats no. the whole purpose of what you asked the question for. The problem is you have the QBs that maybe Russ Wilson, I can squint and see where somebody would want Russell Wilson once the season starts. But this is one of those problems that just plagues a lot of dynasty managers. When your quarterbacks get to this point, they have no pivot upwards value. They have no, oh, I'm going to add add to Matt Stafford to get Trevor Lawrence. Basically, the trade is what does it cost to get Trevor Lawrence? Yeah, I'll take Stafford Matt Stafford for free. That's literally what he's worth. In, right. Yes. So I think it's more of go downwards, try to find creative ways to pivot off of some of these players. It's going to have to be at the right time. You're not trading Matt Stafford till he's literally out there playing and he throws like three touchdowns. You're not trading him now because there's just, there's just nobody that's going to be really interested in giving you anything for him, but you got to be creative. I mean, you got, I was going to ask Shane's opinion on having a team like a team like that with Bijan. Is that a team you'd, you'd add to Bijan to go to a team and say, I'll give you Russ Wilson and Bijan for Herbert. Fields hurts. Eh, try you know where to start. Go down the cool. line, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I take any of those quarterbacks over Bijan. So, yeah. Yeah. Let me try to create this banner here. Okay. This was in the um, community tab on YouTube. Twelve team super flex start nine. I got the one on one and a rebuild and got two offers. Trade one is Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Eckler for the 101. Wow, that's pretty solid. Trade two is Monty Godwin, a 24 first, 25 first, and a 25 second, all late. Which one y'all like better, or should I wait? Appreciate y'all. So the second one, no. I'm good. I'm not taking the second one. The first no. one, if I can flip Eckler for like a first and another piece, I'd be willing to do the first trade. It's a good, but haul. I don't really want Eckler. Haul. Yeah, it's a it's a caveat of being able to flip Eckler, but I've seen some Eckler deals now that he signed. Uh, you know the the new deal where he essentially he's he's safe for this year, which people are worried that he wouldn't be. Like you know, he had no leverage to do anything, but I think people feel more like okay, he could smash for another year. Probably get a first plus for him, I would assume. Would you yeah, do that, especially... Amon Ra, a first and a second for Bijan in a rebuild? About the best you're ever going to get, right? I'm getting on my raw first in a second. Yes. Rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. I could, do, I'd do that. I do it. Look, you're not, I, I, not I would do that trade. Deals. You're not getting the deals that you, you, you would hope you would get for B. John. You can hold them. I mean, you could definitely hold them and go, all right, well, let me see if I can do better next, you know, in, in season. But it's a top 10 dynasty wide receiver and a 24 first. That's nothing to be trifled with. That's not bad. Pillsbury Dope Boy, thank you for the super chat. One of two, 16 team, one QB start eight PPR, 2.0 tight end premium in the startup. Wondering how to value tight end and quarterback. I got Kelsey and Goddard. Should I stay uh, looking more tight ends? Should I, should I stay looking more tight ends? I don't even know. Uh, Meyer, Laporta, 
In Ingram are still on the board. Wide receivers are down to vets like Mike Williams, Evans, Hopkins. At QB, how important is locking in two starters? Drafted Dak, QB slot is actually a super flex, so can flex out in a pinch. Okay, so yeah, you don't have to start a quarterback is what he means. Listen, in a two PPR, start eight. If you're down to Mike Williams, Mike Evans, and DeAndre Hopkins, I'm taking Evan Ingram, Michael Mayer. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Laporta just because he does not profile as a full-time tight end. But even mm -hmm. in this format, even if he becomes like the gold standard for somebody of Laporta's size is like Evan Ingram. That's essentially what you want him to be. But like right. even there, two PPR, I guarantee you Evan Ingram is outscoring Mike Williams in two PPR. So I like that, that the receivers you're done at this point, I would just keep taking the tight ends. I mean, Kelsey Goddard, you're, I assume you have to start a tight end here. I think you have to start one. It's not just a flex. If so, man, yeah. You're, crushing the other league mates by taking them all, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 2.0. 2 I mean, just, you just do the math. You try to think of how much a tight end is worth in a 2.0 tight end premium, like score a lot of freaking points. K Kelsey was probably what, like QB, like three or four or something like that. And that kind of scoring. I mean, damn near close to top five player. In two yeah. PPR. Yeah. Right. Right. So, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, super. Let's um, yeah, and keep us uh keep us posted on the on the startup, in the comments of these these YouTube shows. If you put in startup or inbox trade, try to get our attention with some all caps. Okay, what's your um Adam asks? Thank you, Adam. What's your guys' thoughts on the ideal startup draft settings? Slow draft versus normal draft, third round reversal. Thanks, gents. Uh, so yeah. slow. Put slow. How many hours? What are we talking? Six. Well, I, you okay. know what? I kind of like the idea of a fast snake draft because you give everyone thirty <laughs> seconds to make a decision. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, no slow drafts. <laughs> I mean, eight hours. I, I, I like how sleeper oh. now you can have the auto pause thing. I don't like eight, eight hours. hours is about brutal, to say, bro. Four hours. Four. But the problem is too is like. I don't know. There's like etiquette and stuff, but when you're on the block, you're getting slammed like, or I'm sorry, on the clock. You get told like four times you're on the clock and you're only two hours into an eight hour clock. It's like adjust the clock, or get rid of it or get rid of that fucking guy. But, um, but yeah, four hour slow draft, third round reversal. Yes. Um, what else? Uh, Someone poked clay with a pin on yeah, this topic. They got him angry. Real angry. Yeah. Yeah. It's annoying. It's freaking annoying. Like, if you're going to do a snake, do a third round reversal. I think that gives at least a little dignity back to the teams that get stuck at the 111 and the 112. So do that. I like the idea of doing the startup draft order, you know, where you pick your slots versus just the, the like, start that where you, you pick your slots. Yeah, I love the derby. Uh, I like a short clock. I like. It's kind of too late to do the rookie picks before the rookies because the rookies are already there. So that's probably out. Anything to make there more currency that you can trade. More things to move around, I think, makes it more fun. You can turn a snake into something a little more entertaining if you have some weird settings and stuff like that. But other than that, third round reversal, what we talked make, about earlier. Make trading make the, open, too. Make, yep, make the ability open. to trade in your startup. Trade your startup picks oh. at all for sure roster size align with the lineup size yeah i mean yeah and and if you're listening and, and you're curious as to what kentucky derby style is or picking your order you've never done that essentially what you do you have your let's say 12 teams in the league you run a randomizer that order is the order that you select your draft pick. So the first person on that randomizer would be like, okay, I want the 101. And then you keep going, you make your picks, and then the 11 and 12 spots, they get whatever's left. And that tends to be the end of uh, end of the round. But with a third round reversal, it does make things interesting. But yeah, um, Kentucky Derby style is, is cool for picking your draft slot. Because people really... try to get really cute. People try to get really cute, and it's like, what the hell are you doing taking like the nine right there? Well, so um, the, the theory behind taking the nine there, right? And then is the rookie picks in the draft, or is it inverse order of the startup draft? Which that's terrible. Never do that. Anywho. 
Yeah. So hopefully we helped you out there, Adam. Um, yeah. Starting up uh, on the right foot is, is, is important. Um, Scott free. Thank you for the super chat. Traded my 24 third and fourth, both late for the 301 to take uh, Roshan Johnson. I passed over Tajay Spears because I have Khalil Herbert. Should I have taken Spears? No, I don't care. In this range, just take you're, you're just filling bodies, whether they're on the same team or not. I'm fine with this. If you like her, if you like Roshan over Tajay Spears, sure. Does the fact that he has Khalil Herbert play mm -hmm. into it? Should does that have any that doesn't have any it, value to you? The odds that you're starting both of them at the same time ever is low, so I don't really care. Just give me as many running back shots as possible. That you probably drafted Roshan and you're just hedging your bets on one of the two, but you might get viability from both. Mm -hmm. One could be out, you play the other one, the other one may be the starter when he comes back. So I think I'm, I don't care if I'm handcuffing or not, or I'm collecting backfields when I'm that low. Okay, let's put this up here. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you, Heavy Kevy. It's been a minute, but it's because he's been busy with his newborn son. Congratulations, man. We got a new uh, new member of the Trades and Five family. Congrats. Um, but I'm pumped to jump in on a live stream again with the squad. 12-team, Superflex, PPR, tight ends are 2.0, start 10. Give Mahomes, Michael Meyer... Uh, every time I look at Shane, I say Michael Meyer, Michael Mayer, uh, Pacheco. So give Mahomes, Mayer, Pacheco, no. get Herbert, no. Hawkinson, and AJ Dillon. No, 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 yeah, no, no. even to PPR, the idea of the Hawkinson upgrade, like I'll just bet on Michael Mayer. This, this is uh, now Herbert and Hawkinson for Mahomes. Okay, now, now you're probably talking a little bit there, but yeah, throwing in Michael Mayer and Pacheco, no thanks. This is a that's a good deal to get Mahomes because you're still getting a placeholder tight end and probably just as good or a better running back back. Right. When we yeah. love the tip that sealed your, the the side you're giving, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, we'll take the gift side there. <laughs> yeah, that when you're when you're selling Mahomes, you need to you need to be putting the putting the hurt you need to be putting the hurt on somebody yep. all right welcome back heavy kevy congrats again let's yeah, congrats go to, on the newborn let's go to uh penrose we have another canadian here thank you for the super chat 14 team super flex start 10 drafting moved the 212 jsn my 24 first for fields to pair with hertz four point for passing touchdown have London, Judy, DJ Moore, Mayor, Kendra going into round nine, five twenty-four seconds, six twenty-four thirds. Mistake to give up flexibility for fields. So, so normally I don't like giving up the extra first, but it's a 14 team and you got a top nine quarterback. I know Fields is a little riskier than probably most of the other top nine QBs. This would be like the one exception. I don't like yeah. chase this deal from the start, but in the context, he literally gave up what was Jackson Smith and Jigba and a first for fields in a 14 well, team. Four, four point, point passing, passing touchdown. touchdown. I have Hertz and Justin Fields. I mean, that could break yeah. the league. So yeah, I'm totally good with it. And and did some work to trade back and get five 24 seconds and stuff. So yeah, I lost the 24 first, but did, did some moves to create a little future capital buffer there too so yeah yeah nice move yeah that could end up being i mean in that in that format hertz is worth like four or five first <laughs> it's like in fields could be worth that too if he just does what he did okay justin mack thank you for the super chat thank you everyone very very uh very generous shane uh is gonna get a bunch of coffees and he's probably got a rental car or a broken car window or something so you're uh, going to change me take, 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 <laughs> the car's running justin thank you 12 team super flex ppr tight end uh 0.75 so 1.75 for tight ends start 10 have mahomes and allen backup backs alave london watson chiggy Give Allen London Ferguson a 24 second. Get Bijan Diggs Kittle Daniel Jones. No. Is it just never trade Allen? You can trade Allen, but 
I don't like, no. I'm not adding London. 24 second parents of Daniel Jones is too far of a step down. I don't really care about Kittle. Um, no, I'm not doing this. No. no. Yeah, I mean, London and Diggs, you can almost cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. And then you're left with Josh Allen, Jake Ferguson in a second for Bijan Kittle and Daniel Jones. Here's the thing. I know it looks like, man, I'm making my starting lineup better, right? Because I'm adding Diggs, I'm adding Kittle, I'm adding Bijan, and I'm throwing in Daniel Jones, who you can look at his points per game. You can say, oh, man, he's a good QB. I If I have Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes in a start 10, I mean, they're, just, they're just never getting traded. It has to be one of the other quarterbacks where you're adding a, a locked-in starter for me to consider it. And this isn't that deal. So you, you, here's the thing. You keep those two together. And as long as they're healthy, like you're in the playoffs, in the playoffs. you're yeah. in the playoffs every year. All you have to, and all you have to do in the draft. Hey, I got stuck at the one Oh nine. I'll just draft the receiver. I'll draft the running back. Like you're just hitting skill players. Some will hit, some will bust, yeah, but yeah. man, you still have Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen to fall back on. Always. And, and even, even if you have a down year and, and you get an early pick, it's like, oh, guess what? Fuck you guys. I already got two of the best quarterbacks in the league. I got two of the top it, three dynasty quarterbacks. So Exactly. One gets hurt, yeah. and then you have the 104. Cool. I just added mm -hmm. Jameer Gibbs to the team, and I still right. have Josh Allen yeah. and Mahomes next year. So you, you just don't break them up, honestly. When when I read that, the first thing I thought, too, was just wants to wants to look down at his, his roster and see see running backs and stuff in, in, in their place. Just worrying about your starting roster May 23rd. I mean, we're time is going to start moving and, and we got to set lineups at some point here, but don't uh, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes in the start 10. Just don't touch it. <laughs> it's got to be an absurd haul. OK, Tanner, thank you for the super chat. One of three. Was he screwing around? There's only we only have one. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, 905, Shane. Oh, we can we can hunt that down. Not too long ago. Yeah, Only an was hour too and eight long minutes ago. ago. Um, okay, so here Jordan gave a super chat. Thank you. And he said, sent a super chat, forgot the message. My question is, Shane or a 24 second mid to late? I'm insulted. What's the format? <laughs> Jordan, if you're still in here, what's the format? <laughs> No, shade is definitely worth a first. It's like a 26, you know, like could be around, right? Because Shane's still looking so hard for that. I, I say I'm worth a first, fuck nuts. Um, always. You're worth a 27. <laughs> You're Tanner. worth a 27. No, on, honestly, Shane is probably the most genuine person in the entire community. Yes. I know he has kind of a he has a personality that comes across on the show, but like Good people. I'll just say that. I don't want to get too sappy, but yeah, Shane's definitely worth a first. If, yes. Especially if you have an extra one that you can throw around. Yeah, yeah. If you got them to throw around, don't, if, don't if be it's, frivolous. Don't don't give away freaking Caleb for, for Shane. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. If, it, if, it's a, if it's a high pick, no. <laughs> Sorry, Shane. Terrible. Yeah. No, no. Marvin Harrison Jr. No, no. 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 Matthew Taylor, thank you for the uh, super chat. Part one of two, not pay to brag, but pay to say thanks. Thanks, dude. You guys get some credit for this team. Okay, so maybe you guys did uh, did a review for him where he just listens and we were right that time that he listened. Um, QBs, Josh Allen, Deshaun Watson, Anthony Richardson. Wide receivers, Chase, Jefferson, A.J. Brown, Tyreek, D.K., London. Running backs are Henry, ETN, Hall, A-Chain, B-Rob, and Rooks. Tight ends, Pitts, Andrews, Ingram. My God. 624 first, 225 first. This channel has single handedly changed my dynasty destiny. Much love, guys. That's awesome. So, my final piece of advice for Matthew is you've somehow convinced your league to give you all of these assets. <laughs> Can you convince them to like take the buy in and multiply it by 50? Yeah, I, I was going to say to not that leave. out. Like, yes, you have hit the golden goose of Dynasty Leagues if you can do that because that team is... Well, no, you want to slow boil them. You want to slow boil them. Hey, guys, why don't we $25 this year? How about $25 next yeah, year? How about an empire pot? Yeah, let's do an empire pot and raise yeah, it by yeah. 25 a year. Yeah, let's just keep doing that. Next thing you know, they look up. Six years, it's like a $200 more league. You've won three empire pots in a row. 
good yeah. stuff. No, the Empire Pot is like fifteen grand, and yeah. you're shopping for new houses because your team has seventeen mm-hmm. of the top twenty four assets in Dynasty. Yeah, yeah. Pay, pay to brag. Pay to say thanks. Yeah, you did. Thank if anything, you. his running backs might be a little weak. Yeah, yeah. He's tight, only got up. Brees Hall, Etienne, and Derrick Henry. Man. <laughs> Uh, that's good stuff. Okay. Um, so we got that one that Shane's worth the first. Okay. And then the last batch here is from Tanner. Thank you, Shane, for finding everything. Um, 12 team super flex start 10, 1.75 tight end premium. How do I successfully complete a rebuild while having a really bad roster? <laughs> Lamar Jackson, Anthony Richardson, Mims, Jaden Reed, um, Kincaid Mayer, only noticeable players. Others are a bunch of mid rookies. Four twenty four first, three seconds and five thirds. Three of three is high Shane. <laughs> Tanner. I'm gonna uh, let Shane answer this one because I think Shane uh he'll be aggressive on a team that has Lamar Jackson and Anthony uh, Richardson and a bunch of picks, right? Yeah, like why why aren't I going the other way with this? Like, why aren't I trying to compete now? Um Obviously, you need some wide receiver help when you're na- noting that Marvin Mims and Jaden Reed. Who you just got. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not great. I'm not going to lie to you. Kincaid, Meyer. You know what, though? I mean, so to start 10, actually, you know, he's only got, he's got four first, right? I'm just thinking about what I could get with him. Shane's going buying. He's, he's no, going I think, you know, spring. I might be patient with this one. I might let uh, Anthony Richardson um, uh, format. Is that it? Is that a word? That's a word. Uh, let him format, ferment, and then uh, really, no, that's not it. Okay, whatever. Then next year, I mean, he will ferment. ferment. But that's a weird word yeah. For, yeah. A, for a person. <laughs> for a dynasty <laughs> like podcast, we're, too. We're just going to let him, like, you know. It's a word. We're going to let his dead body just, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I honestly, I'd be looking to move Anthony Richardson for another quarterback, but that's just me because I, I'm I'm weak like that. I, can I get a first plus for Anthony Richardson, like another quarterback? Like, can I find can I move guy? Lamar Jackson for Kyler Murray in a first? Mm-hmm. That, that works too, but I would trade Anthony Richardson first for Kyler in a first. That was my first put, inclination. Put your players on the block and let your league let the market tell you what you should be trading or not yeah. trading. You know, hopefully your league is active enough to where it's doing that. Uh, Matthew, we were joking about uh, increasing the buy-in. We raised from 10 to 40 without me asking. Okay, great. So you can ask next time that you guys should probably bump it up to, you know, 140 ish. Well, look, next, no, next again, season. you don't want it. Look, you guys have clearly never scammed anyone. You do it slowly so they don't notice they're being scammed. You do it immediately. Everyone notices. Hey, guys, let's just raise the buy in by an extra hundred dollars. Everybody's going to be like, wait a minute. You just find an article about how interest rates are going up and inflation and that the league buy in now has to be 60 and then maybe 65 and then 70. Slowly. Yeah. I, I agree with Shane. Don't try to go too much because then they'll go, wait a second. The guy with every player and pick wants to raise the buy-in. What are we doing? Let's just join. Let's all freeze him out and join another league. And just all of a sudden we leave at one time. And he's just left at the altar. What's the saying? Um, An old bull and a young bull are at the top of the hill. And they see a bunch of uh, women bulls bulls down at the bottom of it. (laughs) 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 And the young bull's like, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to run down there and. And geek bang one of them. And then the dad's like, dude, chill. Like, just walk down there. You walk down there, bang as many as you want. The women build all the bulls. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. That's all we got starred, man. That's all we got starred. Yeah, it's 10 20. Oh, Good show tonight. It late. flowed really well. Yeah, we were, yeah. we were yeah, on okay. it from the beginning. <laughs> women bulls, we call those guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we go walk down there and get them all. Everybody. Exactly. Flo, look, Flowasaurus was like, "What are you talking about?" I'm not the first on. one. That, I, that's not my saying. Dinosaur. I mean, I said it very wrongly, but I wasn't the first one that's ever said that. No, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, Josh has never heard oh, this man. bull joke in his life either. Okay, well, we've reached that uh, that point. There's this podcast or YouTube channel I watch, and they call it the deep end when they start getting into the uh, into this kind of stuff or giggling and whatnot. Um, thanks, as always, for joining. 368 people still in here. Hit that like if you haven't on your uh, on your way out. But appreciate you joining. Be on the lookout for a show Thursday. Oh shit! As you guys are saying your goodbyes, we got to do a quick wheel of names to uh, to announce a listener league spot winner from Twitter. Okay, thank you guys. Shane, you want to say something, Scott? You want me to say something? No, Scott? just hey Scott. Hey Scott. Hi Shane. No, good show. We literally we flowed right from the beginning. A lot of good questions. I'm um, looking forward to the five hour stream. I'm sure we're going to get some. There's going to be some nonsense, but there's there's going to be a little bit more formal content for that. I just wanted to share yeah. that. We're going to try to come with like a couple formal topics, maybe not a presentation of sorts, but you know, we might get a little creative with the overlays and the graphics too. A couple of uh, but it'll be a little more else, maybe. Yeah, Shane will be doing his PowerPoint of I don't know what, but here we go. It, Can it, you see this? This is where the graphics get good. Yep, the split screen with the two black lines in front of it with the spin wheel. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, this will work. Whatever. Um, okay, so I am going to spin the wheel. Thank you for everybody who participated. Clay, did you add all the names to that wheel? Yes. <laughs> the Let's work see. Clay does behind the scenes. Oh my god, I know. Who is it? Scooby Scooby Doo ATL one hundred and one. Congratulations. Um, yeah, Scooby Doo. That it's good because here, I'm taking a screenshot because Scooby Doo is in our, you know. In our channel, on on our shows. What am I talking about? I guess How talking. long did it take you to add those names to that wheel, Clay? <sighs> we don't discuss things like that. We don't discuss disgusting, There's the a disgusting lot. aspects of this of this, <laughs> of this channel. An hour to add those names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. Anyway, we're gone. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and we will uh, see you soon. Later. Peace. Bye, Shane.